Let's go back to our top story now. And at least 29 people have died in two mass shootings in the United States in less than 24 hours. The attacks in Texas and Ohio mean that the US has now had 250 mass shootings this year alone. Well, Democrats are now calling for stricter gun laws, with some blaming President Trump's divisive language for the shootings. But will these latest attacks inspire change? Let's speak to the independent White House correspondent, Senia Pavlovich Makatea, who joins me now from Washington. Very good evening evening to you. Um, I want to say good that these, these shootings, good evening, that these shootings are, are shocking and in a funny, sort of horrible kind of way, they're really not. We've been here so many times. The 250th mass shooting this year, the gun laws in America, just unfathomable fathomable to us here in the UK. Yes, you're right, because we have entered into a dangerous territory. And if you look at the history of gun violence in the United States, you will remember that every time something like this happens, the GOP and National Rifle Association is going to tell you how this has been an isolated incident, which clearly is not. So America clearly needs a comprehensive gun control. And I'm hoping that this is going to be the final last wake-up call. But let me say also that this uh, gun control uh, legislation needs to be a comprehensive one. It's not only about banning the assault weapons. It is also about addressing the mental health issues and also having a um, public conversation about the acceptance and tolerance in America for gun violence and addressing the American violent culture. And those are some aspects that we need to definitely talk about and create a public pressure on the political leaders to take this seriously because this is uh, this is serious and it's raising now to the level of national emergency. I mean, do you think in a, in a funny way that banning certain weapons is almost too much for some quarters of American society to ever consider? It just entrenches their views even further. What you could do um, to try and make it more palatable, say, look, we're not going to ban certain guns, but there's a particular demographic, isn't there? We so often see young males, white, who are involved in online extremist radicalist views. Why not say for anyone under 30 of a, of a particular um, race or whatever that it's illegal for them to buy, to buy guns? Yes, you're right. But the problem is that NRA is so deeply embedded with, for instance, Trump administration. I have seen many times, you know, former, you know, one of their main people coming for Bible studies on, on Wednesdays. Uh, to the uh, Eisenhower building. Uh, Mike, Mike Pence, has, he has his Bible study on Wednesday. It, those people are there, they're present. And I think that one of the problems is the lobby. And the other problem is they're afraid that if they do this ban, that they're going to have people on the streets, you know, taking the guns to protest against that. But if, if you want me to, to go back to the shooting of yesterday, El Paso shooting, I would say that this is a clear case of discriminate national terrorism because there is a manifesto connected to it, because there is a blueprint for killings, there is a set of ideas, there is an ideology, there is a clear target selection um, where he's suggesting that uh, the future killings should be targeting soft targets. So this is something that concerns me a lot. So, so it's what, not what's really... stopping America then? Sorry to interrupt you, but what is stopping Americans from increasing online surveillance of particular extremist websites, for example? Probably the laws. Um, the the privacy laws, you know, in terms of you know what, how you in this emergence of social media and everything, you can you can surveil that public uh, privacy laws, uh, private uh, information. So this is stopping them. But I think what's really stopping them is to take this problem seriously because they are used to send uh, um, kisses and uh, prayers, and uh, this is not clearly enough to to tackle this type of violence. So I'm hoping that this time it's going to be taken seriously. But as we can see in this manifesto, the ideas these people have were further reinforced with Trump's rhetoric. So Trump is very dangerous for American democracy. So would you say that, I mean, you say Trump is, is very dangerous for American democracy. Would you say that he is in some part responsible for the Ohio, for the, sorry, for the Texas massacre, um, given what some Democrats have said today, that the racist comments or apparently racist comments of the president can lead to violence? Uh, I would say that his nationalist project is responsible. And every single politician is responsible for the political ideas that he's putting across. And in this case, the pre-existing ideas are reinforced. So yes, he holds a certain level of responsibility for sure. But is he going to change his rhetoric? I doubt.
Um, I was reading earlier that the, the uh, former New York mayor, Mayor Bloomberg, has been involved in trying to develop a gun lobby for gun control to try and rival uh, the NRA in terms of wealth and influence, and he's donated a lot of money to such a lobby group. Do you think that there could ever be a time in America where the NRA can be rivaled? I don't think this is the best approach because it's not the question of, you know, which lobby is going to be more powerful. It's about really making an internal change and understanding how much vulnerability the Second Amendment has left for the misuse and that it has to be adjusted to the new times. So I don't think that, you know, investing more money is going to produce a systematic change because at the end of the day, people can go and make their guns at home. So you need to tackle those ideas at its very source. And especially, you know, if you think about jihadist terrorism, uh, I also had a class two years ago at Yale University I was teaching uh, entitled Can Jihadist Ideas Be Killed? So you can elim eliminate the leaders of terrorist organizations, uh, the ga gang violence and things like that, but you need really to, uh, uh, to kill the ideas because those are the ones that survive. And we need to really... Um, redefine the way how American violent culture is, is defining uh, the political landscape in, in this country. Senia Pavlovich-Makatea, the Independent White House Correspondent, thanks very much for your insights. Thank you.